I'm being told that you can't hear Beatles, so let me just tell you, that's Julie Serving on the phone with us right now, and I think it's possible that no person made more other people want to play basketball than this guy did, and that might include Michael Jordan. And so, Doctor, it's a pleasure to have you here. Before we get started with anything else, the staff wants you to settle a quick debate as to what is the greatest Dr. J highlight of all time. <laughs> is it the up and under, or is it the cradle dunk? Which is the greatest Dr. J play of all time? So I only have the two choices. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them, doctor. If you if you have another that's one, that's what I was thinking. If you have another one you like better, we're good with that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there was a move on Elvin Hayes at the Capitol Center. Y'all might have to look that one up, but uh, the building got real quiet after it happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be a good feeling. What does it feel like when you make a move on the road and, and the whole place goes silent? I was going to say, Elvin got real quiet, too. He didn't speak to me <laughs> for, what, 20 years? I mean, Wow. <laughs> yeah, That's a I, I was actually sitting at dinner with him at the uh, the NBA uh, 35th anniversary celebration, which was in 95. And he, I think he called me in 2017 to do his radio show. <laughs> it was the first time. <laughs> and, and, that, and he kind of apologized about being mad for so long and not speaking because I was like, look, this is like 20-something years, man. Let it go. <laughs> That's awesome. Speaking of letting things go, first off, Doctor, thank you for always being a gentleman and a scholar. I know we talk so much about your basketball exploits, but for young players like myself, that was some of the things that I idolized about you as well. But with that being said, trash talking <laughs> and Elvin Hayes, there was a legendary confrontation you had with a coach of mine, one Larry Bird. Now the Sixers and the Celtics are in the series now, so tell me about that altercation and how did it get started? Well, the the source of it was kind of uh, screwed by various stories. You know, there's a, there's a photograph of Larry and I choking one another, and. Uh, Neither one of us signed it. It always shows up at the card shows or whatever. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. we're not going to dignify dignify the moment because you know the game isn't really about you know fighting uh, unless you know you're in game and, and the clock is running. Then it's always a fight. It's always a battle. But uh, I think if you watch the the highlights, and this was uh, in November, what was it '84? Uh, and I. I'm cl I'm hard pressed to feel that it was an exhibition game. I don't even know if we were playing a real game. So it was Charles's first year. Uh, Moses and I and, and Maurice and Andrew, we had just uh, won the NBA championship, so we were you know coming back as defending champions. And uh, early in November, uh, you know, Celtics were ready to go. I mean, they came out ready, red hot and, and roaring, and and um, you know we were kind of. Okay, man, we just won this thing. You know, it was, we played the longest season, so we're just getting started, and, we, and we're breaking in a new player. So the, the fight, actually, there was an offensive foul called on Larry, um, on, on obviously the offensive end of the court. He didn't like the call, so he was really mad at the referee. And he came down court, and he was kind of like, you know, stomping and – he was in front of his bench, and it looked like a moment in which uh, he was going to take a swing. And it was very uncharacteristic because, you know, we did Converse commercials together. We did Spalding commercials together. So, you know, we were kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought something was going to happen because he was, you know, he was he was definitely mad. But he was mad at the referee. He wasn't mad at me. And... Uh, and I just extended my arm to hold him back. And it ended up sliding up to his neck. <laughs> and then it, Oops. Those <laughs> things happen. Then it was hard. So, so it was really inadvertent. I didn't really mean to grab him by the neck, but it was kind of inadvertent. You know, I pushed him in the chest. He, his hand slid up, got to his neck. He reaches for my neck. Next thing I know, uh, it's a melee. Can we um, fa oh, fast forward uh, to what's going on right now as the rivalry continues in, the, in this new generation, yeah. Ben Simmons, Jason Tatum going head-to-head -head in this one. Um, your yeah. thoughts on those two guys? Well, 
uh, you know, I mean, I just love watching Simmons play. He's uh, uh, he's he's a special player. There's no question about that. And uh, you know, I think he'll get a chance to uh, prove it more so um, as the playoffs uh, go on. Uh, Tatum, Tatum probably should have been the first pick in the draft. Um, you know, he was he was there. Uh, I guess there was just. You know, it was all about the fit, and, uh, you know, we took faults. Uh, Philly took faults. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, Fultz's whole rookie year, you, I think he'll be a rookie again next year, like sort of like Simmons because of the injuries. But uh, Tatum has been awesome. It, it just seems as though, you know, when you get a player who can uh, raise the level of the game at playoff time, then, then you've got somebody special because usually after – college, you know, I mean, it's a struggle to make it to the next level. That's why there's only a handful of players who really make it to the next level. And now when you make it to the next level and you're able to elevate your game, uh, you know, AKA uh, Mitchell Donovan and uh, Tatum and, and, you know, a few of the rookies uh, and there's a lot of rookies that obviously didn't make the playoffs who probably would get a chance, but maybe they'll get a chance next year or in the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I like Tatum. I like his game. I like what he brings to the table and the fact that, you know, they They've lost players, and uh, you know, behind Al Horford and his effort, everybody is is saying we can still win. So uh, that's why it's a great that's why it's a great matchup right now. It is indeed, Dr. J. We got to get you in here sometime so we can just sit and, and listen to stories, which we could do all morning long. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the series. All right, you guys take care. Keep doing what you're doing. It's great.